Hello there, Math 131 students. It's Alana Tucky, your lead faculty. And I kind of want to go over some of the basics of my math lab. When you're in my, your Math 131 My Math Lab course, what are some things you should watch out for? All right, so keep in mind, by the way, that I can't view it from a student view. I can only view it from the instructor view. So you're going to see some stuff on my view that is not available to you. Anything with this little icon right here means it's turned off and students can't see it. Sorry, but them's the breaks. All right, now we're in the course home right now, and the course home has a whole bunch of stuff available. Like you can see, I've made homework, and those are available, right? Now when they become due, you'll also see little icons like that. So you can see, hey, the homework's up, the worksheets are up. The little orange ones are quizzes, which in this course I've made into worksheets. Your instructor could also make quizzes, reviews, you know, all sorts of things like that. And you can see I've made an announcement. That's what the little, um, caption right there is for. And then you can see what homework assignments are due when. For me, I've set these off quite a, quite a ways in the future. Let me, let me pause and change that. Hold on one sec. There we go. Okay, so you can see I've got this little guy over here and he's got a little timer on him, like a little clock face. And if you move your mouse over to it, you can see it means that orientation homework is due. So if I click on it, it takes me right to that homework set. Nice, huh? All right, and then as you do assignments, what will happen is you'll get your progress bar. So it'll show you where you are for the assignments that you've done, right? And there's a little progress bar of 80% and how overall you're doing and how many assignments you've done. There'll be a lot more than 24. That's just where I'm at right now while I'm making this video. All right, and then let's go. If you want to do your homework, you can see the upcoming ones. You can click on them there, or you can just click on homework over here. And you can see the laundry list of homework assignments. I've only gotten up to chapter four so far, but more is coming. Oh, yes. We'll go all the way to chapter nine and even hit a little bit of 11 in there. So there you go. And then I've made some, I call them my math lab worksheets. In my math lab, they count as quizzes. Your instructor might assign them, might not assign them. There are also these pre-tests and post-tests that you can take down here. So maybe I should change that to say quizzes. I might. I think I'll bring that back or worksheets and reviews, something like that. All right, then study plan. Study plan's a great thing um, because it allows you to work on problems even after the homework was due. It, it doesn't count for anything, but if let's say you've already done all of your chapter five homework, but you're about to take your test and you wanna practice, I don't know, five, three again. Well, you can come in here and do all these different problems. The ones with the little green sign means they have videos attached. These ones with the little pink mean they have animation. And they always have sorts of helps and viewing examples and all that good stuff. They're really there um, just to help you study. Now, again, most of this stuff isn't available. See, there you go. Um, now what I mean, it, most of it doesn't count for your grade. So it's not going to actually affect your homework score, or your quiz scores or anything like that. But it's there in case you want to study something before your exams, stuff like that. I've had some students have some great success on exams because they went into the study plan and practiced, practiced, practiced. And by the way, it'll let you redo problems. So like if you do it wrong, I'm just going to put in a number. There we go. It tells me it's wrong. And then you can try again and try again. And then after the third time, I think it's going to freak out and say, nope, you know, the correct answer was five. And then you click similar exercise and you do it again. And your homework works that way too. So um, different instructors have different limitations set up on it, but most will have around three. So you try it a few times and then you can see how it says it's wrong up there with the little red X. Then you can just click a similar exercise and do it again. It's beautiful, isn't it? All right, so let me close that. And then there were all those helps. So that's the study plan. The grade book shows you your grades, but only on my math lab, unless your instructor also posts grades in there as well. Um, different instructors have different um, policies. There we go. That's the word. Um, different grading policies, different places they post. So talk to your instructor about that. Chapter contents is nice because it shows you all the different chapters. So you can click on like chapter three, three, two, and it'll let you click on the textbook or the study plan. And you can literally get the textbook out of my math lab. You can zoom in, you can go from page to page, you can print a page if you need to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it even has like you try it and practice problems that you can work on. Cool, very interactive, very nice. So that's what the chapters are, and that's in the course tools. 
and then tools for success. Now in here we have the link to my YouTube channel, which is where you're watching this from right now. And also the link to the technology tutorials, which are on my channel. If you look right here, there's a math 131 technology playlist. There'll also be other videos going up eventually, probably some lecture notes and other things, but um, that's the playlist I have in there right now. So check back here. I, if I put up any more, you'll know. And then let's see the multimedia library. Oh, I should go back to tools for success real quick. There's some other good stuff in here. Like, like there's an algebra review card and then there's calculator references and stuff like that. So there's concept videos for algebra. There's all sorts of good stuff. Graphing calculator, quick reference. Although my technology tutorials on YouTube kind of go through what you need to do for the course. But if you want some extra ideas, you, know, you can click on the calculator, etc. Um, the multimedia library. Let me just pick a chapter like I'll pick chapter three and I'll say select all fine now it has lecture videos now these are from the publisher not the lecture videos that go with our course pack necessarily but still helpful and there's powerpoints um, that you can download and go through there's the textbook again and a whole bunch of animations. So all sorts of useful stuff for every single chapter. So if you're stuck or, you know, you just didn't get 3.3, you could go watch another person's lecture on 3.3 or another person's lecture on 3.4. You could go open the PowerPoints and try to follow along there. Right. All right. So then that's turned off because you have to pay for it. Email. So if you need to email your instructor, you can click on that and say add and then type, you know, whatever question you have. Right. And then that would be the subject and down here you would fill it out there's also document sharing there's a whole set of alternative notes and videos made by Christy Laird that I've posted in here and they, the videos are all linked to from this document right here so you'd have to say yeah I'm willing to, to download that document and then all these other ones are the lecture notes she was teaching from S sorry that didn't come up on screen hold on one sec there we go. Okay. So you like click on a lesson video and it's going to open up that lesson right there. And sometimes it might say, do you trust video.jccmi.edu? And you say yes. Right. Again, they're not the same as the course pack notes. They're just a whole other set. So that's two sets of videos that are already available to you in this, plus all the videos that I make and post to my math lab. So there's lots of help out there. All right. So let's see, is there anything else in here? No, none of that rest of that stuff is useful to you. All right. So I hope that helps you have a sense of what's available to you in my math lab. There's a ton of help in here in the tools for success in the document sharing in the multimedia library. There's just lots and lots and lots of help way beyond just, you know, helping you with specific problems. There's algebra review cards. Look at this. Right. Everything in the kitchen sink, you know, all these formulas and stuff. It's all in here that you could use. You could print and use just for your own edification, right? One last thing, since we have the time, let me go over just real quickly how to do some homework problems. So I showed you a little bit earlier, but let me click on one. So this section has five problems assigned or something like that. And you can see you have these help me solve this view and example. So if you click help me solve this, it'll help you solve that specific problem. But then when you do it, it will automatically change it to another one, right? So the graph decreased steadily in D, enter. Yay, I did it right. And then go on and go on. But then when I close it, it if I did the whole help me solve this, then it would change this problem to a different problem. View an example just gives you a totally different example. And this little icon over here lets you make it bigger or smaller. You can actually print the example and look at it on paper. Some students have issues with connectivity at home. So if you have issues and you know, you, you can't always be online or whatever, then you can use the print feature. You can print either the question or the entire assignment. So you can print your entire assignment and then you can take that as a worksheet, fill it out at home and then come back to a computer and just enter in your answers. You might not get all of them correct, Right, this is what it'll look like. So you take that home and when you come back, these exact problems will be what's available to you in my, in my math lab. If you get any wrong, let me, let me just do this wrong. Um, B and then let me see if it'll let me do it wrong again. Yep. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. There we go. The answer was D and so on. And you can keep going and going and going and going. And then once you're done, it'll, their little button will show up down here like it did in that study plan question where it was, give me another one. Oh, this will happen. Totally. Nope. I did it wrong. And then I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let me just click. Um, there you go. Enter. There. For multiple choice, it won't let you do it multiple times because there's only a couple options. See similar exercise? So I click it, it changes the problem a little bit, right? And then let's see, save the assignment. We'll, we'll save it, and then you can come back to it. So you can see I got both of those wrong. I can click back on two and do it again, right? Um, textbook opens up the textbook to the section that this problem comes from. Very nice, very handy. Again, you can print pages of that textbook. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. You can click on the contents feature up here and you can see all sorts of different t chapters. Oh, if I can get it to work. It's not liking me. There we go. Oh, it won't let you do it. It won't let you do contents if you go into it through here because I'm going into it through the homework problems. But the contents feature does work if you go into it through the chapter contents um, bit over here. If I go in through chapter contents, if I go into the book there, then it will let me, but I'm not going to do that. And then connect to a tutor if you want to chat with, um, those are Pearson tutors. I can't remember if that service is free or not, but you can try um, and see how that goes. Oh yeah, there you go. So your first session is free for 30 minutes, but after that you'll have to pay. So I would probably get rid of that and make it so you guys can't see that because you don't want to. Now ask my instructor if your instructor has that turned on, allows you to email the, the instructor and say, hey, Alana, I can't, or whatever the name of your instructor is, <laughs> I can't figure this problem out. Isn't TV independent? variable question mark and then you could submit it and send it and it'll come in as an email to your instructor and they'll be able to see the question that you were working on nice all right I'll turn off that tutor thing hold on there we go so I've got the problems in there and if you want to click on different problems you can see like up here on the top left there's number one so if I look at number one I got it wrong there's number two say yep sure I'll leave I don't care so number two is right there number three is right here number four is right here and if you look over here it tells you it's 1.1 number 21 so if you go to the study plan or the textbook that's the problem from that section section 1.1 exercise number 21 from that section Okay. You can also use the arrows over here to, to go from problem to problem. Nice, huh? All right. I think that's about it. Oh, let me click on these. If you want to make a graph larger, you just click on the little magnifying glass and you can maximize it, make it really big. You can go medium. I tend not to do maximize, but if I want to get a little bit better view, I'll sometimes click the medium. The normal is the regular view. And then I can close it. All right, that gives you a little bit of a sense of how to work with my math lab and what kind of a features are available to you. So I hope that was helpful. And we might be back for more videos later to get into some specifics, but I'll see you later.